Alright, check this thing out. This is a 1972 Suzuki RV90. So it's a pretty old machine. You can see there's the VIN up there. You can see 72 right there. So it is indeed a 72. I picked this thing up for 550 bucks. It was up for, I believe it was 650 or 600. And uh, a bunch of people were interested in it. Um, it's mainly complete. I'm trying to find any parts that aren't complete on it. I don't know if this thing had a backlight at one point. I think right there maybe. And then like a bracket of some sort was right here. I'm not sure. But it's got the headlight on it. It's got the speedometer gauge. It has 4,914 miles. Let's see right there. It has all the um, controls, choke, I think that's a horn right there. I don't know what that would be for. High and low maybe? I think these are blinkers right here. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And then it's got the throttle, brake, and then the clutch is right here. So this thing had a really, really crappy clutch cable on it. Let's see if I can find it. It was locked up here, right here. And then it actually had this coil on it with this coil wire and you can see the coil wire came off right there so I'm guessing the coil is still fine it's just the coil wire broke off and there's no way of getting that back in there so I ended up ordering a new coil for it and a new clutch cable so hopefully we can get this thing running today um, I guess the guy bought it from his boss I believe who had it sitting and uh, I think it was up at his cabin and he really never used it. Who knows how long it's been sitting. It obviously doesn't run. Um, everything needs to be gone through on this thing. So it'll be a pretty fun project. Hopefully, hopefully we can get this thing running today and uh, there's not too big of issues with it because I'm wondering why it sat for so long. Um, the seat on this thing is huge, you can see. <laughs> Giant seat. And to get the seat off, you pull this lever down here. Uh, there we go. And the seat opens up. So this thing is oil injected, which is kind of nice. So you don't have to mix the gas. This is where the oil goes. So we'll have to make sure that's working. And then this is where the gas goes. So the straight gas into there. And then this also has a 6 volt battery right here. I don't know what that stuff is right there. <laughs> oh yeah, it's missing the battery. But I also got a brand new battery for it. So we'll see if that fits in there. So we should have all the parts for it to make this thing complete. That should work, I think. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. So, we'll have to install that battery and see if the lights work and everything else. But this thing doesn't have blinkers on it or anything, so I'm wondering if that was an option at one point. You can see blinkers could go right there. And I wonder if there's wires for them as well. I don't see any wires for the blinkers. I wonder if they're in the headlight bucket, but that's kind of cool. And these must have been for the blinkers now that I'm thinking about it. So these brackets must be for blinkers. And if I'm looking back here, I think these are for the blinkers back here. So yeah, very cool machine. I've owned one of these before, but uh, it wasn't in this nice condition. It also has good compression. It should be a little bit less than that. <laughs> Hopefully it's not locked up or anything. I feel like the compression's good. That's like locked up right there. What the heck? Huh, it's almost like it's hitting the spark plug. We'll have to mess with that. But uh, it did turn over before, so. And then the carburetor on this thing is right behind here. 
you can see I think this is throttle control but yeah let's jump into it let's take out that spark plug see what that looks like all right so for some reason this thing won't turn over I'm wondering if the wrong spark plug is in it See if the spark plug is crunched up here. Oh geez, there's a bunch of oil pumping through. Ooh, that's a bad sign. That is a very bad sign. Um, there's just straight oil in this thing. <laughs> what the heck? That's really weird. Look at that. Let's see if it kicks over. I wonder why there's just oil in it. I wonder if the guy let it sit with oil in there and uh, that's why there's oil built up. But uh... Yeah, the plug looks crunched as well, actually. Looks like the plug was hitting. So that's a bad sign. See how the plug is crunched? Yeah, that's not good. I'm going to look up what plug this thing is supposed to have. And then we'll go from there. I wonder if the rod bearing is bad causing the piston to hit the spark plug. But uh, we'll look up the spark plug and see if that's the right one. I just looked it up, this plug is compatible actually with this machine, so I wonder why that's hitting in there. It's really odd. Let's just kick this over a couple times, get all that oil out of there. Try to screw the plug back in here and see if it's hitting still. Sounds like it's hitting still. So weird. What the heck? Let's see if more oil came out. Oh yeah, just squirting oil out. What the heck? Look at massive amounts of oil coming out. What is going on there? That is really weird. So once it builds compression, it just pushes out all the oil. So, I mean, look at that. What is going on there? It looks like there's water in there as well. Any metal shavings? It doesn't look like any metal shavings. But it just, it pukes out a ton of oil. Doesn't make any sense. All right, before we take off the head, and uh, the cylinder and all that fun stuff, we are going to check and see if it has spark with a new coil. Um, I mounted this coil to the frame. It has to be grounded out right here for this one to work. And then there's like a little connection right here. And then there's one up here it connects to. Well, hopefully it works for us. There's a lot of junky ones out there that don't work. So they did a bunch of research on it. And uh, supposedly this one works, so let's see here. Come over to the other side so we can kick it over. All right, found the key for it. That's gonna go right here. I think that 
fits in there. There we go. Looks like there's three settings. One, off, probably run, and then lights maybe. All right, we're gonna get the battery hooked up too because I don't think this thing runs without the battery being connected. So let's hook it up and see what happens here. Do we have negative? There we go. Nothing turns on. Maybe the fuse. It's gotta be the fuse, right? The fuse looks good. All right, well, I was going to uh, Get the voltmeter out and check the wires, but check this out. Looks like pretty good spark to me. So maybe the uh, machine needs to be running for the lights to work. I'm not sure. And maybe that bulb is broken. The neutral light. Or maybe it's not working down here. Because nothing is turning on. I thought the light would turn on if we had a battery, but I guess not. We'll have to look into that further later, but at least we know it has spark now. So obviously this thing is two stroke. So the only way oil can get to the piston is if uh, it gets past the rings and there's a bad crank seal. So it's gotta be getting past the rings plus a bad crank seal, which would be pretty bad. And the crank seal, I believe, would have to be on the right side of the engine. because that's where you put the oil. Head coming off. Ooh. Look at all that oil in there. So that's kind of funny. The guy, when he sold it to me, he actually had the, uh, the spark plug out of it. And he said he checked compression and there's good compression, so um, it's kind of weird that he kept the spark plug out when he sold this, so I'm kind of thinking he knew about that uh, oil spurting out of there. But the head looks pretty good. No damage to the head. You can see all the oil sitting at the top of the piston there. So that's not good at all. And we'll kick this thing over a couple times and see if more oil spurts out of it. And that looks like crankcase oil to me. Cylinder wall looks really nice though. So it must pull the oil up the crank seal when there's compression. So we'll put the head back on quick now that we have all the oil out of it and we'll see if it does it again. All right, we got the head back on. Let's kick it over a couple times and see if more oil comes out. It's not kicking over. 
Oh man. That's not good. Through here. Down. Oh yeah, look at the spark plug. All oily. And check this out. Put the rag right here. Yeah, I just bunch of oil kicked out of there. So it is indeed. I believe it's a crank seal. All right, a bunch of oil pumped through again, so we know it's probably the crank seal. And what happens is the crank seal either pushes out and uh, is probably non-existent because there's so much oil coming out of the cylinder, so it's probably pushed out of where it's supposed to be. Um, or it's just like broken or like really, really, really loose in there, allowing oil through. So let's take off this thing. There's a carburetor behind there. We'll take that off and then get the cover off. You never really see bad crank seals on these things. So. There's the carburetor. In there. Looks really nice. Gotta take the top thing off right here. piece can come out like that. There's a cap on this thing right there. Should be able to pop off of there. Yeah, like that. The whole thing can come off now. And then there's an access port through there that you can get that bolt off. I think it's a flat head though. And then this whole thing can slide off. Pull this thing through. Get this thing out of here. Get the choke off. At least everything's kind of loose on this thing. There we go. The little carburetor is off. All right, let's see what this air filter looks like. I think this whole thing can come off of here. All right, to heat up this uh, plastic here, this rubber. This off of here. Okay. Ooh, look what we got in the air filter. A little mouse nest. <laughs> Looks like that's packed pretty full. We'll check that out a little bit later. But uh, now we can. Now we can get the kick lever off of there, and then this whole side case off. All right, there's a couple screws, one right there, one right there, right there, right there, and right there, and then a couple on the bottom we have to get off. So let's work on those. These are usually pretty tough to get. Oh, man. These might require that one came. These are pretty tight on there. That one came. All right, we've got three bolts left. Before we go any further, um, let's drain out the oil. You can see the oil drain plug is right there. Looks like good oil. In there. 
Looks like it was recently filled up with new oil, actually. You can see it. Looks really good. Huh. That's interesting. That doesn't look like the oil that was coming out of the cylinder. I know that. That looks like brand new oil. Huh. That's weird. Let's take off the pipe and see how much oil pours out of there. I wonder if that's just plugged up with oil. Bunch of water in there, too. Plugged up. So I'm wondering if it wasn't the crank seal. Huh. I wonder if people put oil down there and then it just kind of sat in there. I'm not sure. All right, check this out. I put the head back on and now when I kick it over, it kicks over just fine. That's what I'm thinking is that the pipe was filled up with oil and uh, I think it's plugged up and not allowing compression to release through the pipe. So it's just building up compression and then it just does not kick over. And I think the oil was backing up through the pipe coming in through the, uh, the cylinder and that's why it was black and not brand new oil like this. So that's why it wasn't that color coming out. It was black because it was sitting in the pipe. So I think what we're going to do is unclog that pipe and I think that might fix our problem. Um, we're going to go to the tip of this thing and try to take that screw out of there, pull that muffler out of there. Let's see if we can get the silencer part of the pipe out of here. Looks like somebody already tried that, kind of. <laughs> Looks like they clean that out. Let's see if anything comes out. I think that's plugged up completely right here. You can't see through it. So maybe I'll shove a screwdriver through here. All right, so I just pulled this out of here. Now you can see through it. It looks like that was completely plugged up. It's got some gunk in there. It looks like metal chunks, actually. You can see the metal chunks in there? There's a big chunk right there. And that's completely clogged. So what we might do is let this sit in the ultrasonic cleaner for a bit. See if we can get that to clear up. Let me try to dig out that metal chunk in there too. It's in there pretty good. Oh, it's all the way from the bottom. There, it's coming. See it poking through right there? Yeah, that's definitely metal. It looks like it was part of like a or something. Huh. There's another chunk in there too. This whole thing is clogged up. I 
That's pretty crazy. So I wonder if a piston broke at one point and then got shoved in here. It's coming. There, there's the other piece. Right there. We got the pipe back on, check this out. <laughs> Now it kicks over just fine. So I think the pipe was just plugged up with oil and uh, remnants of a piston, I think. All right, here's the carburetor. Just gonna take a peek in there and uh, clean this out before we attempt to start this thing. I'm guessing it's pretty gunked up. Let's see what's in here. You can see it's pretty gunked. I've got the old float in there. A lot of times these develop pinholes, but does, this one doesn't feel like it doesn't have any gas in it. The needle looks like it was stuck in there. And then there's a tiny pilot right there and the main jet right there. For the main, it's running a, looks like a 250 for the main. That's really big. It's pretty gunked up. Look at all that gunk. Pilot is definitely plugged up. Yeah. So we'll clean this out and uh, get this reinstalled. All right, we got the carburetor reinstalled there. Let's see what's going on with the air filter next. You can see it's got a nest in there. Let's see how does this thing come apart now? I think these screws right there. Nest in there. Not horrible. Air filter still intact. That's good. All right, we got everything back on this thing. We got the coil all mounted up and wired in. So this is premix, like 40 to one. Just to play it safe. I don't know if the uh, oil pump is working. See the gas is coming out of it over here. Let's try to get that hooked up. All right, we've got gas going to it. The carburetor's cleaned. We've got spark. We've got compression. So let's see if she fires up.
going pretty good. Smoking quite a bit. Oh, at least she runs. I was a little weary with that uh, coil, but looks like she runs pretty good. Let's see if the lights work. All right, new spark plug. All right, we got the light to work on this thing and we got it to stop leaking. Um, so the float height was a little bit off and um, a little piece of rust was also stuck in needle seats. So we got that all figured out and then the petcock was leaking. I put another um, petcock seal in there and that seemed to fix the problem. So everything is good to go now. We are going to quick clean this up a bit. You can see everything's kind of dusty on it and kind of crappy. So let's get this thing shined up and see what she looks like. All right, all the plastics are shined up. I'm going to have to wait for it to get a little bit warmer to pressure wash it, but um, you can see it's gonna clean up pretty nice. I think if we get a new seat cover for it, this thing would be looking pretty brand new. So we also installed a new clutch cable. Clutch is right there, going up to the handlebars. So that's working. Um, I'm going to see if it goes in the gear and drives here, and then we'll take it for a test drive. This thing warm up for a little bit. Check and see if the speedometer works as well. Looks like the neutral light doesn't work. Speedo works. Just slipping a little bit. We're 
runs pretty good though. Second gear, third gear. Fourth gear. Hit 40, pretty good. Wants another gear though. Short gears, third gear. Fourth gear. Well, the first ride went uh, really well on this thing. Brakes work really well, back brake and front brake both work. Speedometer works, and we got her up to 40 miles an hour um, before the uh, the gears tapped out there. But it really wanted to go one more gear. You could tell it was it was revving out plenty. Um, but yeah, everything is working on it. The light works now. Um, the horn works kind of. I'll show you. I think the horn's kind of broken, but it does want to work at least. And then I'm sure the backlight would work if we had one. So I'm going to pressure wash this thing, get it cleaned up, maybe get a new seat cover on it, and uh, this thing will be finished up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video on this thing. Um, it was uh, pretty fun diagnosing it and uh, figuring out that the pipe was plugged and it was not the crank seal causing the oil to be in the cylinder. So I'm pretty happy we, we didn't have to take apart the whole engine. We were able to just unplug the pipe and have that fix the issue. Um, also, I used my heat gun and uh, put my heat gun in here and let it sit for about 30 minutes and it got out all the carbon. And then you just hit it off with a hammer and it just falls right off. But that's why I was able to put that silencer back in there and uh, have it work perfect. So. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, stay tuned for next video, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and until next time, we are out.